Hello everyone, this is Steve O'Reilly with SkinnyPost.com. We're bringing you the daily update and today we're going to talk about potential landing areas for some key free agents as free agency begins in just a few days. Obviously this is just speculation, but it's always good fun to see where we think guys are going to end up and what makes sense. Starting with Peyton Manning, obviously he's whittled it down to a few teams. Uh, it's between the Denver Broncos, the Arizona Cardinals, and perhaps the Miami Dolphins are still in it. I do like the Denver Broncos at this point. I think John Elway will, does whatever it takes to win, and Peyton Manning likes that type of attitude and competitive nature, and together they're going to be a formidable team. I see uh, Peyton Manning ending up with the Broncos. As far as Matt Flynn is concerned, I think Matt Flynn ends up with the Miami Dolphins. Obviously the Dolphins' new head coach is the former offensive coordinator of the Packers. Matt Flynn is very familiar with him, and they obviously know each other well enough and what their capabilities are. He'll be able to come right in from day one and run that system and help get the Dolphins on the right track. Uh, Alex Smith out in San Francisco, I believe he stays with the 49ers. They had a good thing going last year. They got the number two seed in the NFC heading into the playoffs, so I think Smith was a key part of that. He also performed very well for Coach Harbaugh, and I think it's a good fit for them to get him back in the fold. Looking at running backs, Peyton Hillis is probably the big key name on the free agent market for running backs, and I think he's going to go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know the Buccaneers need another running back to pair with LeGarrette Blunt, and at number five, Trent Richardson may just be a little too high to take. So if you go ahead and take Peyton Hillis and pair him with Blunt, you got a nice one-two punch of power runners and can really dictate the way the offense runs through the running game. Uh, Mike Tolbert, the former San Diego Charger, I think he's going to end up with the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are a little thin at running back right now. All they have is uh, uh, really nothing. I mean, other than Scott, they're really depleted. They're probably going to draft a running back. Uh, but you don't want to depend on a rookie to come in and carry the load, especially in that tough division. Tolbert can come in, get the tough third down yards. He's very dependable out of the backfield. He catches the ball well. I, I look for Tolbert to go to Cincinnati. As far as Cedric Benson's concerned, I think he's going to have to wait for someone to go down uh, due to injury and in training camp or mini camp uh, before he gets a call. I could be wrong, but I think that the NFL likes to go with new fresh legs and, and Benson's years uh, are starting to catch up to him. Now, the wide receiver group is pretty thick this year. There's quite a list of names of talented players, so we're going to run through this pretty fast. Vincent Jackson is going to go to the Washington Redskins. The Redskins don't have a ton of draft picks. They need a deep threat for RG3, and Vincent Jackson's the best choice for them. Snyder will throw a boatload of money at him to try to get him in fold, and I can definitely see that happening. Uh, Reggie Wayne, I believe he's going to follow Peyton Manning and be a Denver Bronco. Uh, obviously, the uh, connection there it goes without saying, and it, it's a good fit for both parties. Marquise Colston, I believe he's going to end up with the New York Jets. The Jets have had a little issue lately at wide receiver between Plaxico and, and they need another big receiver on the outside and Colston could be that go-to guy on third down. You pair him with Holmes and you got a nice one-two combo and maybe some of the drama will go away in the locker room as well. Brandon Lloyd, the former St. Louis Ram, I think he's going to follow Josh McDaniels and be a New England Patriot. Um, he's uh, said in the past that McDaniels uses him better better than any other coach he's been with and and obviously McDaniels knows what he can get out of him and honestly the Patriots have a dynamic passing game but not a ton of great wide receivers I think Chad Ochocinco's days are over in New England and look for Brandon Lloyd to be that target uh, on the outside for Tom Brady um, Mario Manningham I think he's going to be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer the Buccaneers need some help at wide receiver. Uh, they haven't really been a proficient passing team. I think Freeman can use all the wideouts he can get at this point. Guys, that can put up big numbers. Looking at the tight end position, you got John Carlson, the former Seattle Seahawk, and I think he's going to go to the Super Bowl champion New York Giants. Uh, the Giants lost their tight end to a torn ACL in the Super Bowl. They like veteran players to come in right away. They like to run the football. They need someone that can block and stretch the field downfield, and Carlson can do both of those things. He's a complete player, so I like the Giants to sign him. Uh, Dallas Clark, if he's healthy and passes all his medical tests and everything, I believe he follows Peyton Manning as well and will more than likely be a Denver Bronco. The Broncos tight ends are anything but spectacular. Uh, they have some solid players, but no one that's really uh, stretches in the field and doing things in the passing game. And now that uh, they have Manning in the fold, hypothetically, I could see Dallas Clark following them. 
Uh, offensive line, Carl Nix, I believe he's an Arizona Cardinal. Uh, the former Saint is a very, very good guard slash right tackle. He can move all along the line if you need him to. He's an all-pro. And the Cardinals could use all the offensive line help they can get. Chris Myers, the former center for the Houston Texans, I believe he goes to the Washington Redskins. Again, the Redskins are going to be big players in free agency because they don't have a ton of draft picks anymore due to the trade that they made with the Rams. So look for them to solidify the offensive line, get closer toward that zone blocking scheme, which Myers excelled in at Denver and with Houston, and he'd be a good fit for the Redskins. Switching sides now, let's look at the defense. Obviously, the former number one overall pick, Mario Williams, is the headliner. Everyone wants to know where he's going to go. I believe it's going to be the Atlanta Falcons. They let John Abraham go. They need a pure rusher, and they honestly feel that they're not too far away from a Super Bowl. They have a lot of talent, and they could use a little bit of help getting at the quarterback, and there's none better right now in free agency than Mario Williams to do that. Speaking of John Abraham, I like him to go to the New England Patriots. The Patriots don't have a pure pass rusher. Uh, they've thrown a couple of veteran guys in there who did admirably uh, last year, but they were not a dynamic team as far as bringing the quarterback down, and Abraham could be a situational pass rusher that could come in and really get to the quarterback and help out the Patriots' defense. Looking at linebacker, Curtis Lofton, he has uh, a lot of years left in him and is a very good player, and I could see him going to two teams, really, but I'm going to pick one, the Seattle Seahawks. I think the Seahawks need linebacker depth, and obviously Lofton would help fill that void. He also could be a good fit for the Philadelphia Eagles. However, I like the Eagles taking Dan Connor. I think they're going to look for a pure tackler, someone that will help shore up the middle of that defense when they run the wide nine and help plug some of that run gap. At 15, with the draft pick that the Eagles have, I think they're going to want to go defensive tackle and try to solidify the middle even more. So if they can draft a good defensive lineman and then pick up a linebacker in free agency like Dan Connor, they'll be all set there. Uh, Steven Tulloch, I believe he stays in Detroit. He played really well for the Lions this year, and I think Detroit will reward him with a contract. Talking about the cornerback position, I think Carlos Rogers stays in San Francisco. The old saying is, if it's not broke, don't fix it, and that defense was number one in the NFL and played very well at a high level, and Carlos Rogers was a good part of it. They put the franchise tag on Deshaun Golston, and now they can probably focus their efforts on getting Rogers into a deal uh, for at least a few more years. Cortland Finnegan, the former Tennessee Titan, I believe he goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers need some cornerback help. Rondé Barber's not getting any younger. They may draft a corner at number five if uh, Morris Claiborne is still there. However, you always want to depend on a veteran for depth if you can, and Finnegan is a good physical corner who is uh, really fits the mold of what kind of defense they like to run. Brandon Carr, the final player that we're going to talk about today, I think he goes to the New England Patriots. The Patriots need a tall corner to match up against some of the tall wide receivers out there. Carr's over six feet, and honestly, the New England Patriots secondary was a little shoddy last year, and they can use all the help they can get. For our speculation of where the big-name free agents are going to go in 2012, I'm Steve O'Reilly giving you the daily update, and this is SkinnyPost.com. We're giving you the skinny 24-7.